Hey, good morning everyone. This is Eric from the African Homestead. Just wanted to provide a quick update on our dry season garden. Okay, so far in our garden we've had a lot of success uh, and some failure. So let me just do a quick review on today's video. Okay, our corn is coming up nicely. Uh, you know, when we planted this, uh, one thing that I realized quickly, you know, in when you plant corn in blocks, you want a minimum four rows. And for our first planting, that's what we have is four rows. And then the rows weren't quite as long as I was thinking. So they're only about five feet long. So this is about as small of a plot as you can, you can grow corn. Uh, we've had a little bit of uh, issues with some cat, uh, not caterpillars, with some grasshoppers getting in and some other worms. And so we had a little bit of damage, but unlike the rainy season corn that we grew, it's totally destroyed. Um, this, is, this is actually gonna make it. So we've, we've done our first um, side dressing of compost that you can see in each one of these rows. And I'm going to follow up with some compost tea here in a couple of days. And today um, we planted the second planting of corn. You can see the rows there. The main difference between the first and second planting is with the first planting, um, we mix the compost in with the soil. And looking back on that, because corn is such a heavy feeder, I decided that um, mixing in nice compost with completely depleted soil, it only just reduces the effectiveness of the compost. And so what I decided this time, we dug out deep furrows, um, about 10 inches deep, and you can see is about 10 inches wide. Dug out deep furrows here, filled it completely full of compost, so there's gonna be plenty of nutrients. As you can see, we have, we still have some, some of the um, material left from, from the banana. We have, eggshells here there's we eat lots of eggs so our compost is it has a good amount of calcium we still have some leftover carbon but for the most part it's all broken down and so we're ended up doing five rows of corn and the, the row length is closer to seven feet so i think as long as uh we don't have any problems as the as the land dries out and uh, we are able to keep enough water on it keep the nutrients there that our second planting of corn, I hope, is going to do better than our first. The bed where we have our potato greens is still going on strong, just keeping water on it. I'm also going to be uh, using some compost tea on this. Last time I used it, as I mentioned in an earlier video, really, really caused it to take off again. So that compost tea, I'm totally sold on it. I'm making another batch. I'm putting a video out on how to make that in your own garden. It's super easy, super quick, takes three days. And then, uh, and then you can put it straight on anything in your garden. All my avocados are still doing good. They're uh, after the last compost tea treatment, they really picked up. Um, still, still fighting some white flies. We did a treatment. Looks like, looks like everything's gone. We're able to do a treatment and get that washed off. And so, this one is picking up. I don't know if you remember from my first video, all the leaves were curled up like this, but now. Um, you can see how we had some new growth that is affected, but uh, so far the, the avocados are taking off fine. We're going to get those planted up country as soon as I can get up there. So these are the pickling cucumbers. They're doing great. And as you can see, we already have some, some blossoms on there. So they're going to be having some fruit soon. Pretty excited about that, even though they're still pretty small. You can see that the pickling cucumbers are a lot smaller plant than our slicing cukes. And so the slicing cukes also, we're starting to see some blooms there, but the just the leaf is larger, the plant is larger, but they're starting to, to go up the trellis and are doing great. I am also just super happy with our zucchini. We have a bush type, I, can't, I think it's called Black Beauty, is what we planted here. Uh, we started putting some mulch around there. Pretty soon here, I'm gonna get another load of the wood shaving mulch for free and uh, we're gonna get that on all the plants. Here we have the Liberian pumpkin. It's, uh, it's like a large squash. Some of those can be um, two feet long, 
and a good 10 or 12 inches in diameter. They're really large squash, but uh, they are doing well. Again, since they are uh, commonly grown here, they don't have really any problems with disease and pests, uh, unlike if I, if I brought some pumpkin or squash in. Okay, here we have the cantaloupe, otherwise known as muskmelon. This, this variety, if I remember right, is called Escadito 47. It's, a, uh, it's, it's really made for more of a hot environment and it's doing pretty well. We planted some of this in the rainy season and it grew fine, but just the rain ended up causing too much problems with diseases. And so it's doing better during this dry season. And this is our watermelon. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in it. I planted two different varieties and it, you know, three to a mound and I'll have in some places one there's one right here that isn't really doing well at all. It looks like a bug got to it last night. Um, but all the watermelon really is just, it's just not doing well. I planted this the same time as we planted the cantaloupe and the pumpkin. You can see how big that is, but yet the watermelon is just suffering. So if anybody has any ideas on what could be affecting the watermelon, we, we also tried watermelon during the rainy season and it was overwhelmed by the rain and disease and bugs. But now it's, it's, that's not really the problem. And so it could be because I brought a variety in. I'll put the variety down on the bottom of the screen, the two types we planted, but neither, neither one is really doing well. So if you have any ideas of what could be going on with the watermelon, please uh, leave a comment below. So this is what remains from our first planting of tomato. We had four different varieties, two, mid-sized tomatoes that are supposed to be for the tropics, disease resistant, and two cherry tomato varieties. And of all of them, that's the only one that remains. All the others within four or five days just wilted and collapsed. And so again, if anybody has any idea of what I could do differently here, um, we have had almost zero, and I think that the rainy season tomatoes that we planted uh, numerous tomato plants uh, all died of some kind of a wilt disease and I think we harvested four cherry tomatoes and so uh, from what we planted in the ground this is all that remains interestingly though we planted some of the same varieties in cement bags 100% compost and you know with the holes that we dug out for the other tomatoes we filled those holes with 100% compost but all of these 100% compost and I don't think we have lost a single one yet to any type of wilt or disease or anything. And so, I don't know, it could be a bug in the other soil that, that invaded. It could be some bacteria. Maybe this is just uh, more purified uh, since it's compost. But again, any ideas that you have, feel free to fill me in. But so far, I'm very happy with how, the, how well these are doing. They're growing great. They're putting on blooms, so we're gonna start seeing some, some tomatoes soon. I think most of these are cherry, cherry tomato variety. So with these cherry tomatoes, um, I'm very encouraged that they're growing in the cement bags. The downside is, while I had the ones that we planted in the garden all identified, as we started putting them in the, in the cement bags, uh, we mixed them up. And so I'm hoping they all do well, so that I can say yes, all the four varieties that I'm trialing, that I'm testing here, do well but if only some do well I'm not gonna know which ones they are so it's always important in your garden if you're trialing seeds keep them identified keep them segregated so you can see you know which varieties do the best and so uh, when again we're, I'm learning lessons now and uh, and that's gonna improve my gardens in the future and these are the sweet peppers uh, two different varieties of sweet peppers that I planted here that I'm trialing uh, they're doing okay they don't really seem to be taking off too much. They're just kind of there. I've lost a couple of them, like this one right here is a goner. And uh, I do have some backups that I'm gonna be able to plant and get in the soil, get them going. And so hopefully they'll, they'll pick up here soon. Okay, these are my Liberian chili peppers, super hot on the same scale as a habanero there. I, from the looks of the pepper and from the research I've done, it looks like there's some type of a bonnet pepper. There's one called a scotch bonnet that's very similar in size and shape um, and, and in heat. And so these, again, they're almost native to Liberia. They do very, very well here. So we're not really, we've lost a couple, 
um, but they're not really suffering at all and they're growing like crazy. You can see these were planted at the same time as the sweet peppers and the size difference is pretty dramatic. And so they're, they're growing large and fast and uh, hopefully start seeing some fruit pretty soon. We have planted some more of the mid-sized tomatoes. I think one is called a Tropic VFN and the other is called Neptune. They're supposed to be good for, for hot environments. The, I don't know if you can see it here. I have these little baby dill plants that we actually transferred from our bed. They were not doing well at all and they were probably going to die. And so we decided, well, let's move them over into our nursery see if we can get them strengthened up and then planted back out. And then we also have some lettuce here that we bought in the store. And we actually had some success this rainy season of buying the lettuce in the store bare root. It's locally grown. And then uh, just replanting, replanting that, that root ball and having it grow again. But it looks like this is probably not gonna make it. And then a couple days ago, we did plant some different types of flowers that we're trialing here. We have some marigolds, some different varieties of marigolds, different varieties of zinnia, and some other flowers here that we're trialing. So hopefully you see those start popping up here in the next week. And then here are the papayas. And these, this is one of the dwarf varieties. This is another one. And they're putting on fruit in spite of having some problems with disease. And uh, it's, it's interesting, even though you know this one literally is only about uh, two and a half to three feet tall, it is producing fruit. Um, some of the standard varieties here are, are seven to eight feet tall and just starting to produce fruit. So I'm pretty impressed with how these dwarf varieties do. And so I do have some seeds from Echo, I have two different dwarf varieties that I'm gonna be planting once we move on to our homestead. At the end of the rainy season, we did plant some tomatoes um, that, and most of them, you know, you can see here, most of them died. Most of them did not do well, but it's kind of funny. So you got this guy here, death, 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 death. And well, look at that cute little tomato. It looks like a little tiny beef steak. And so that's gonna be, that's gonna be interesting. I wanna try that. I'm gonna take it inside and rinse it off, uh, but that should have some really nice flavor. But from all these all these bagged tomatoes, this is the only one that produced. And this one, I don't think it's gonna make it. Now in amongst the papaya trees in my papaya forest, we still have our pineapples. Uh, this is probably the nicest one we have, but it looks like that we're not gonna get any, any production this year. So most likely all these pineapples, we're gonna dig up and transfer those to the homestead. And for the compost, you can see the first uh, couple batches that I had in this last bin are all gone. And about half of this uh, second batch that just finished is gone. And this one that's going to finish here in about two or three weeks is, uh, is, is here. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of concerned that we're going to end up not having enough compost to make the season. I wasn't planning on building another... Hey guys, what are you doing? Hey, Tipsy, what are you doing? You're going to get sick. Get out of there. Go. But I'm concerned that we're going to end up uh, not having enough compost to finish the season because we're moving. What's that, buddy? A sword. A sword? Yes. You want me to find you a sword? Oh, you have swords? We are Teenage Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's great. Oh, Ruby needs a sword? Well, Tio, you have two. Why don't you share one? Yeah, I think that's the right thing. Oh, Ruby, you have a sword. All right. Okay, I'm going to get back to what I was doing. Okay. Say, see you later. See you later. All right. So as I'm saying, my concern is we're not going to have enough. I didn't, I didn't want to make, even though, you know, we, we're still putting our kitchen scraps here. I wasn't planning on making another compost pile um, and then feel guilty if I don't transfer it to the homestead but maybe I will end up doing that just to be safe to make sure we have enough compost. And finally, the passion fruit is doing great. It just uh, finally was able to reach up to the top of the trellis. And so it's gonna start spreading out over this trellis and covering that. It's gonna give us some nice shade during the height of the dry season. And hopefully we will be here long enough that it'll start dropping some fruit, but all the 
Hold them are doing well. I'm gonna go ahead and do some top dressing of compost on them to give them an extra boost. And then also use some of the compost tea. Because I noticed last time I used the compost tea on them, it really, they really took off again. And then finally this bed, I planted some old flower seed that I had. It may or may not germinate. Finally this bed, I planted some old flower seed. It's probably not gonna germinate, but I, you know, what else are you gonna do? So I decided to give it a shot. And then uh, the, uh, the rest of the bed I'm going to be planting in the flower seed that's on nursery now. And so hopefully that will help with uh, pollination here in the garden. Well the sun is setting and I think we've had a pretty good day. We have the mulch spread on the garden and uh, it's looking great. One thing that, one thing that I, I'm learning about the soil here in Liberia in the tropics, one of the things about acidic soil is it drains very well which is great during the rainy season because you don't have as much problems with flooding. You don't have that deep sloppy mud except you know some holes on the road. But in yards, it's just, it's not that way. The water drains very quickly. The downside is during the dry season, it's really difficult to keep moisture in the ground. Uh, even with the compost I'm using that's, that's balanced, has good nutrients in it, it drains very quickly, gets dried out very quickly. So in North America in a garden, when it says, oh, you should give one inch a week, two inches a week, to a certain type of, of vegetable. I mean, here, we're really needing to give that like every other day, if not once some water every day. I just noticed that, that some of the, the hot pepper plants, the chili pepper plants that we transplanted, um, if we don't give water on them every single day, if not twice a day, they start to wilt, they start to droop, and you can see they're really, they're really challenged and they're suffering. And so getting the mulch on the ground is uh, hopefully gonna help uh, retain some of that moisture and getting it trapped in and then we're just gonna have to keep water 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 on it to keep things rolling here well that's today's garden update from the African homestead in Liberia West Africa hope you enjoyed the uh, episode if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and also I encourage you if you like what you're seeing here and you want to join me on the journey to hit click the subscribe button also like the videos you like uh, share them with your friends I would really appreciate help you helping me get the word out about my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Have a great week.